I feel like love is the cure to everything, you know? And if, if we prioritize that, then all of these moments where people don't understand, it's like, you don't need to understand everything. That's why I love myself. So mm -hmm. that way, um, like when it comes to these moments of violence, I'm not reacting. I'm just mm -hmm. like an observation of what's happening. You're listening to The Real You. Thoughts, ideas, and perspectives from the ordinary and all of us. My name is Dewey, and this podcast is in partnership with Pocket Change, the social platform built to show the real you. Six, uh, of last year, I just observed, like everybody else, all these folks storming the Capitol. It's like, all right, well, I was storming the Capitol, and the way that I wanted to combat that situation is do an event where people talk about different issues, and we have uh, poets, and we have artists, and they perform, and you know, we do it at a black business and we just have an open dialogue about, you know, what do we need to do here? Like, mm -hmm. let's not try to change everything on a federal level, mm -hmm. not right this second. Let's try to just organize within these local small pockets, get people aware, like, this is what we got going on <clears throat> and, you know, share, share knowledge, share wisdom. Mm -hmm. So what, when you talk about to the, like, radical love because i 100 percent feel like i feel what you're saying on that and i actually totally think that is the way but to actually put that into practice i think can be hard for most people is you know you see people doing hateful things taking advantage of others even in subtle ways whether it be on the corporate side or the through the laws or through corruption it doesn't even just people not being kind to others how how do you find yourself putting those into actual practices? Because I think it's easy to say, oh no, just love someone even if they're hurting you or they're hurting your people. Um, yeah, how would you put that into, into more practice or what methods do you have to kind of continue to work on that? One thing that I'm trying to do, like I have a, a vision goal sheet because I was listening to this brother, Michael Walker, Michael Walker is leading this uh, this business called Modern Musician, and it it's funny because Modern Musician is really helping people like get their music out there because that's what I have historically struggled with is like putting my music out there because I'm not really interested in making money like that's not the goal like my music is supposed to just be heard by the people who need to hear it mm -hmm. and. <clears throat> uh, ultimately you have to have a business mind within that mm -hmm. however because he is so business minded and he's also a dad like he's a loving individual he practices that radical self love mm -hmm. uh, he has this uh, this vision goal thing and he created it on this platform called Notion mm -hmm. and basically I just decided to do it. what I'm going to do is make my first goal for this year my routine like literally waking up at a very specific time and then going to sleep and trying to get better at that every single day literally trying to get better at setting my own boundaries around mm -hmm. what do I practice at the end of the day the middle of the day the beginning of the day so mm. that way as stuff happens throughout the day i'm not as easily reactive because mm -hmm. if i stick to my self-care and self-care is just like this huge i think it's becoming a buzzword and once it starts becoming a buzzword i get annoyed i'm like i don't even be interested in saying it that much because everybody <laughs> starts to it. And it's like ah i don't want to yeah. use it <laughs> I try to practice these things that uh, that I feel like I should be. You know, if I if I want to maintain an even temper, then I need to do stuff that will like mellow me out. Mm -hmm. Because when COVID first happened, like I was barely able to get to work. You know, like I could barely do my job. You know, I was I was put on probation. You know, I went through those phases. I've been on probation pretty much on at every job. Mm -hmm. that I've been at since 2016 like every mm -hmm. single job is like yo <clears throat> like you 
are not meeting the standards and the requirements of this job. Mm -hmm. And because I was, excuse me, I was put on the, the spot in these weird ways, I had to plant like little micro seeds, not mm -hmm. every single day, but it was kind of like events would happen. And then between events, there'd be like almost really good moments. And then all of a sudden life would happen. And I just got tired of life happening and me not being prepared for what can happen in life. Mm -hmm. And so I just made a serious commitment this year to like prioritize how do I start and end every single day. Mm -hmm. And within that, I uh, I wake up, I keep my, my cell phone in a completely different room. Mm -hmm. So it forces me to, to walk, you know, to the kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, so because I'm near the kitchen, I'm closer to water. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I drink some water, I brush my teeth, I take a piss, <laughs> and then um, I, I either do, you know, like five to ten minutes of silence and just practice gratitude in my head, mm -hmm. or I start my uh, my martial arts stretches. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I do that for about 30 minutes. I try to activate my body, you know, mm -hmm. very gradually. And then typically I, I have to uh, either take... Uh, the queen who I'm with, uh, Jamila, either I have to take her to work mm -hmm. and if for whatever I might be able to sneak a little bit of social media like early, early in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to do everything that I can before uh, 6.50 mm -hmm. for myself to get me ready for the day because mm -hmm. I know that by 7 mm -hmm. I got to get my daughter ready to go to daycare. Mm -hmm. So from there, I go to daycare. And, uh, while I drive her, I try to listen to very intentional things. Mm -hmm. um, like I'm getting more used to stuff like podcasts, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, and audio books. Mm -hmm. So you got uh, I Will Teach You to Be Rich by Robbie uh, Seti. Mm -hmm. And I literally have listened to him for like the last three weeks but then there's mm -hmm. also will smith he just came out with his own book mm -hmm. so i'll listen to the audio books slash uh, uh podcast and just try to give myself constant knowledge constant movement mm -hmm. to keep my brain occupied yeah and that just allows me to be like fully functional throughout the day even if i'm tired it's like mm -hmm. You know, I'm here, I'm ready, I'm active. Yeah, that's, um, I found that true in a lot of different ways with the kind of the mantra of you are what you consume. And that can be both <laughs> food and beverage, but also even more importantly, you call it content or the energies that you kind of put yourself into is then what you start to become and reflect out. So if you're taking time too, I've found that the, intentional podcasts or even in engaging in something with like an active listening mindset so um, I was talking with someone about this yesterday but to watch a movie nowadays you just see everyone you put on a movie you know you want to chill have like before bed or something like that or just after dinner um, put on a movie everyone goes pulls out their phone watching the movie just on their phone and I'm sitting there looking around kind of like what like we can't even be present with in a movie which is also supposed to be this kind of like grandiose entertainment factor um and the reason I bring that up is because I think it speaks into the intentionality of like what it is that we're actually engaged in in these moments and knowing that that is impacting us in some way so whether it be your morning routine and taking the time to be silent and just let whatever thoughts come up that maybe need to come up or that you weren't expecting or yeah putting on more of the audio podcast or even having music that you've wanted to create time to actually listen through an album or a, a project from a certain artist that you wanted to give proper attention um yeah i think that's one of the most important things we can do on a daily basis because if you're not even in tune or present with even the in crazy entertainment that we're consuming, how can you be present with yourself and then vice versa of 
even starting with that and those moments of silence and to your point on the buzzwords it's like i hate the <laughs> meditation or yoga um as like these now kind of glorified versions of that but um yeah even just getting up and having to walk to the kitchen to get to your phone i think it creates those things of like you open your eyes and you feel how your body's feeling you start to shift are you tired today are you excited are you questioning something um it allows you to kind of sit with that instead of how am i feeling oh today well this is how like all of a sudden it becomes no longer you um so i definitely admire that you can do that i still i still have my phone next to my bed and my daily life but um i go through i think very intentional stretches of discarding it from my even few hours at a time where it's just I won't respond to anything to anyone I'm even if I'm just hanging out with someone um but yeah I think that's like a powerful kind of idea completely agree it's, um yeah uh, a lot of times we become creatures of habit mm -hmm. and if technology is kind of ruling our world and you know I, I invest in technology like anybody else it's just when I engage with it is the biggest thing mm -hmm. you know like what I use it for like is it using me or am I using it yeah 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 yeah. you know like we have to be aware of programming and, and how we program ourselves so it's mm -hmm. like this is my body my life my reality mm -hmm. um, or at least that's what I I try to tell myself to some degree but once mm -hmm. again like the most high has total control like even when i want to tell myself this is my body it's like well the most high take your body in an instant it's like mm -hmm. well it's actually my body so you thought wrong yeah, yeah like we have these these wake up moments you know where somebody gets into an accident you lose a limb or mm -hmm. something's broken and it's like it all these little things can help humble an individual but it's just I think that's the the beauty and humility and try to align with whatever vibration that will help get to the next step because we don't mm -hmm. always need to go from <clears throat> like Goku for example he can't go from excuse me fighting Vegeta for the first time to Super Saiyan like that's mm -hmm. not how it works it's like uh, like he has to practice KO Kid which is a pretty dope technique mm -hmm. but he's not jumping from all right I just beat Raditz barely to all of a sudden I could just transform and level up Super Saiyan God. Like, that's yeah. not real. You know, like, you have to go through the, the stages of evolution and, and just stay at those vibrations. And at some point, you vibrate to a place where, mm. well, now everybody afraid of you because you didn't level up so damn much that, I mean, shoot, as soon as you power up, yeah. everybody's just like, whoa. <laughs> Yeah. That's kind of how I see myself. Like, I don't need to be, I don't need to be where, uh, I don't know, one of the guys I listen to a lot is Laudrell. And I don't need to be where he is right now. I don't mm. need to be where Talib Kwame is right now. I don't mm. need to be where Jay-Z is right now. Mm. Um, I just need to be where I am and, like, embrace my gradual evolution. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like the idea, too, with the level up situation. I, I, I either talk, whether it's music friends or other people, like, just the feeling that there's this it almost feels like we're in a game right with our with our life like there's all these crazy things thrown at us and we're accomplishing tasks and going forward but to look at it that way also first gives a little bit of kind of joyousness to the small things but then two I literally think of being on Ableton or other stuff and I'm collaborating with someone and they'll show me this one little trick and it just like will rock my world like I had this moment um, and it was the simplest thing. It was to add a plugin to your, to your rack, the shortcut, you just do command F and you just type in the plugin and hit enter and it'll just pop into whatever track you're on. And for months I was probably going in and like trying to like find the EQ thing or like I would click up and go to the category and search it. And the second I discovered command F and enter, it cut like, a good 30 seconds out of every decision out of 40 layers out of 
four hour sessions into the rest of my life. And I was like, I just, I just leveled up. That just took me from like level one to at least level four. And um, but I go to that kind of like simple example because it, it speaks to to where you admire these epic humans, for example, like someone like Jay-Z who just seems like he's got the world in his hand and he's running around doing his business stuff and dope music and um, all this, but he's in the same thing where like, you know, he got into the beat stuff and then doing the rep and then he got into the business and then expanded his stuff. And then when, it's like each of these are just small daily levels, levels up and taking wrong turns. I feel like that's something um, maybe even the word wrong is not right, but it's just taking turns that are a longer track onto the next level. But that's like learning to accept that, I think, is also another level up. <laughs> I completely agree. <clears throat> and the other thing to keep in mind is when we think on a like on a more political level, mm -hmm. um, there's no way for us to guess how folks uh, how they really level up you mm -hmm. know like if, if we look at for example Donald Trump what did he ever really level up you know because like not and not like on a financial level but just more like on a spirit level like mm -hmm. how do we level up or level up spiritually mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, like how do we become better fighters for peace or for you know, people or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I, a lot of times I try to look at the background and the backstory behind somebody, mm -hmm. not to judge, but to just get uh, context. Because when mm -hmm. I have context of, you know, Donald Trump, it's kind of like, okay, well, Donald Trump's father was very similar to Donald Trump. And Donald mm -hmm. Trump, like, he decided under his own volition to stay in that type of mentality, mm -hmm. you know? So if that's, if that's what it was for him, then it's like, well, what can we expect? And mm -hmm. then the people who feel like that's the way they've only went as far as Donald Trump's father, right? Mm -hmm. Because they're not, they're not trying to see anything different, mm -hmm. but then you have dudes like Adi Ashanti. Adi Ashanti is this really spiritual brother who, uh, he he wrote this book, The End of Your World, mm. and <clears throat> he talks about all the different trials. He talks about being just like a decent athlete, like trying to bike and, and you know, live life, but then just getting ill, you mm -hmm. know, just getting sick, like one big sickness, and then he'd try to, you know, work out and be all, you know, fit again, and then all of a sudden, he gets wildly sick again, and he's like, what is going on? Mm -hmm. Like this doesn't this doesn't make sense. But he talks about how his life was trying to adjust and how ultimately it's kind of like a spiritual awakening, you mm -hmm. know. So you have to go through certain amounts of suffering, you know, rest of power to tick not hard. But he has his book, No Mud, No Lotus. He talks about suffrage and how do we get out of suffering mm -hmm. and thinking that it's only applicable to us because everybody has suffered everybody you know whether it's buddha mm -hmm. Muhammad ali uh amy winehouse mm -hmm. everybody has suffered before mm -hmm. so how do we just admit it mm -hmm. and then try to grow from it?